recently we've taken a look back at the Comfort 1 and Comfort 2 data, which, as, as we all know, were the Phase 3 studies that led to the approval of roxolitinib back in 2011-12. And um, we've been able to use this very mature data set to ask a few questions about when um, patients would likely most benefit from a JAK inhibitor. And so the analysis uh, was done looking at the time from diagnosis to initiation of roxolitinib and comparing the outcomes for patients regardless of whether they, uh, with regard to whether they started roxolitinib within 12 months or after 12 months. And um, we were also able to look at the benefit for the patients uh, and outcome according to whether they were on the control arm, which for Comfort 2, of course, was active therapy, and for Comfort 1 was placebo. So um, it was quite clear that the benefit uh, for patients was attained to a greater extent if they were treated early after diagnosis, which sort of adds weight to the discussion about, you know, why do we wait for patients to have more symptomatic disease, bigger spleens, et cetera, um, before we treat them? And, and this is a debate we're looking at in the field for myelofibrosis. I think right now we've got many questions. Some of them are, you know, which agents should we combine and how should we measure success? Should that be bone marrow fibrosis reduction, et cetera, et cetera. But also, if I was talking about myelofibrosis to, for example, a breast oncologist, they would, I think, would be horrified that we don't treat patients earlier in their disease course. And so this data quite nicely answers that. Of course, there are drawbacks because these are patients with intermediate to or higher risk disease to retrospective analysis. It did show also other data. So for example, patients with higher hemoglobins do better, patients with smaller spleens do better as well. And these are all things we would expect. But that leads us to this question, which actually we're, we're debating at EHA is should we treat all patients or patients with low risk myelofibrosis? And so I, I think as a field, we should be moving forward now to start addressing that question, whether we treat them with uh, roxolitinib or something else and how we measure success. So uh, we'll be debating that. And uh, I think we'll be debating it for a few years, but hopefully we'll make progress.